Hello everyone, Wolfie Cass here, back with another tier list video. Uh, I was a little bit behind on wanting, uh, of what tier list I wanted to do, because I actually wanted to make a tier list for the big patch that came out kind of recently, and then also uh, I wanted to make one for the expectations of the Season 0 that came out for, for Ranked. Uh, but they happened very quickly, and I wasn't able to do them in time, so now I'm just kind of combining them. Uh, so that's that's what we're just doing today. We're gonna we're gonna put everyone together based on my general criteria of my personal opinions of how every character ranks. So to go, uh, if you haven't seen one of my tier list videos before, uh, I'll just do a brief overview of what my ranks mean. Starting with the S tier, of course. S tier is reserved for those characters that are so good that they just literally have no reason to not be part of uh, of your kind of idea of how you're approaching the game. S tier are reserved for people that if they are on the enemy team, then you need to have an answer for them. You need to focus kind of you, you need to kind of focus and shift your entire approach and composition because of the fact that they exist on the team. And that doesn't necessarily make them like bad to be on your team either like not you know when we get to when we get to some examples I'll, I'll kind of go further into that but just keep that in mind like this is mostly for you have to shift your you have to shift your perspective of the game if you see this on the enemy team a tier characters that are good in basically every situation you're going to see them on most compositions um you'll never be like you'll never be uh, flagged for seeing one of these characters on your team um or or playing them in into one of your games and just they're generally just all around super good super useful very flexible in most cases as well b tier is for characters that are they're 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 very solid in everything that they do they're just slightly outclassed in in a lot of different ways um but still there, they can kind of perform the function that you need to. Uh, or B tier conversely, you can say that these are characters that sort of need, they, they sort of need a little bit of extra help with the team composition, or they're like very good at rounding out, just kind of kind of middle of the road in all aspects. Like that's mostly what B tier is for me. And then C tier are the ones that are just under par. Um, they, they can do all right, but you kind of need to have a very specific purpose for using them. Um, like a, a very, a very specific way of approaching the game or like a, a, a play style that you're trying to do with your full composition. Most of the time C tier, or you can't really pick these characters unless you have like a full team or maybe even like, maybe even three might work three out of five of, of the team kind of being in comms. Uh, but for the for the general like for the, the general idea of C tier, you really just kind of want to not think about them too much unless it's just kind of a clutch thing where you're you're <laughs> you have this like little ace in your pocket that you, you're bringing out for one of your teams. And then finally, the D tier uh, characters are just not good. Like that's that's the long and short of it. Like these are characters that are just not good at the game um, or, or not not good. Yeah, not not good in team compositions they're just they're too difficult to slot in they just fall short in everything that they're trying to do and it's unfortunate um and yeah i i generally would say that i would consider them bad characters and again this is all 100 percent my personal opinion um you are you are free to have your own opinions and i encourage you to uh, i encourage you to have your own opinions because everyone everyone loves to you know say what they want to say and and you're entitled to have your own beliefs and if you work well with a certain character by all means like please play that character and make it happen uh so i'm going to compare a lot of these to another tier list that i made um a while ago <laughs> quite a while ago actually because uh <laughs> when the when the game got released i made a tier list i it's really been a while, actually. I haven't made a tier list in in quite some time, at least not a serious one. Um, but I'm gonna compare. I'm gonna compare what where I rank people here to my one week later revisit tier list, and a lot has changed since then. Again, we had a big patch, um, 
and we've seen kind of the shift. <laughs> we, we, we've seen the shift in meta, just kind of seeing uh, through, you know, the community given tournaments and then just like, you know, witnessing people's streams and, and hearing community, uh, hearing, you know, chatter in discord servers about what, uh, what has changed and like how people have, are approaching it and kind of what works and what doesn't anymore. Um, but anyway, no more stalling. We're going to go starting with Ashlyn. Uh, in my other tier list video, I put Ashlyn in A. I put her at the top of A, actually, and I think she's actually probably going to stay there. Um, Ashlyn hasn't changed, like, at all since the game came out. In fact, she's only really gotten better because more people are playing her, more people are understanding how she works. Um, more people are finding, like, different... More people are finding, like, kind of more flexible builds for her. And she's also just overall better because they fixed <laughs> they fixed the bug with her focus so now you can actually use Kator and, and launch people you know away from where you actually want to target the ability instead of on yourself which in, in a lot of cases was kind of it was one either really hard to do because you're more focused on playing range and you don't want to go in because you're squishy or two because uh it was more of like a self peel thing and a lot of Ashlands weren't even really using their focus, you know. But now that those situations, now that's not, not really the case anymore. You know, you can, of course, still use it for a self peel, but like you can, you can displace a lot of people with Ashland focus now. So it's really only made her stronger. Like I, I, I almost want to bump her into S tier, but I know, like in my heart of hearts, I can't actually do that in good conscience because I don't think that she's actually, I don't think she's actually worth, like considering in the crowd that i consider an s tier and when we get to a couple people in s tier um we'll discuss that further and if if you've watched any of my prior tier lists like you know who i'm probably going to end up putting in s tier because most most people do put them in s tier uh anyway beckett beckett i also put in a tier i put her just under ashlyn or not just under ashlyn there are there are a couple of people in between but generally lower than ashlyn uh, and yeah, she's going to stay there. Beckett is, Beckett is again, one of those characters that has not been changed. Um, she still generates focus super fast. She's got super great AOE. She's got an insane amount of upgrades that are all like, she's got really good upgrades across the board. Um, does so much damage consistently, like at medium and medium long ranges, great focus, AOE damage. Like you, you, you can't do anything wrong with Beckett. Uh, the reason why she's not in S tier, like I, I keep giving her a lot of praise and people might be confused by the fact that I'm not putting her in S tier. Um, it's because Beckett doesn't really bring anything like insane to the table. Um, she's got like a lot of area of effect damage. She's got like really good burst combos and just steady damage, but she's not, you're not like, you're not looking at Beckett on the enemy team and saying like, Oh, okay, we need to change everything that we're doing and like get Beckett out of the picture. Like you should be doing you should be doing that anyway, because that's that's just Beckett's a high damage priority target, and once she's used her jetpack, like she is very easy to pin down. But she's also she's also like a smart Beckett player will be really pivotal in the game. But you're not adapting a whole strategy around the fact that, oh, there's a Beckett on the enemy team. That's not in my opinion, at least. Charnock. Charnock, I put also an A tier just under Beckett. Actually, just under Beckett this time. Uh, this time. And I... Hmm. I feel like Charnock has unfortunately fallen off a little bit. And not just... Not just because... Like, he hasn't gotten changed at all. He still does great damage he's got like a great range he's got good aoe spells and like a good focus um he's got good self peel like the 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 the, the deflection from his rmb that one upgrade that makes it deflect projectiles that come in like that's super helpful um and yeah like people are people are you know, I, I'm seeing flexibility more with the E upgrades, Hot Hail as well, where some people are still getting like larger slow, and then some people are getting um, meteor, and it's working. You know, it's like it's just it's it's strange to see the world that we're in with Charnock. Um, 
I'm still going to put him in A tier because I still think he's super useful. I'm not really seeing him that often right now, which is a little bit of a surprise to me. But I think I think the meta is more shifting to favor actual like shooters like HK and Amani and, and Beckett. It just like those those three have like super high priority right now and others are being left in the dust. So uh, Charnock's still going to sit in A tier, but I think he's probably going to be on the bottom. Uh, moving on to Ezrin. Ezrin, I put <laughs> Ezrin, I put in D tier actually. In my last one, I uh, I've seen Ezrin pop off. I really have. I just I I feel like I feel like the fact that Ezrin can do well on one specific map with some very specific situations in a team composition does not justify him being usable i still think that ezrin is d tier i'm putting him in i'm putting him in d tier a lot of people love ezrin a lot of people will like die on the hill defending ezrin and saying like he's so good he's so much fun like he's so valuable he never dies but like really reflect and think like do you think that Ezrin is actually good or do you just enjoy the playstyle that he brings? Because I agree that he has a very fun, unique, cool playstyle of being this like drain tank that also happens to do just a lot of damage in these in these good situations. But Ezrin's not good. He's he's not a good character. Um you can pop up with him. Like don't get me wrong. <laughs> you you can you can bob up with Griselma too. I'm just gonna put her here. We'll talk about her in a second. But Ezrin, like, he he had a great moment in a community tournament on Sanctum Falls, where, you know, the team he was on was super far ahead, and the enemy team just like couldn't get any footing because he kept peppering them with AOE soul blasts in a narrow hallway. Like that's a very specific situation where he excelled at. And if that's the only situation where he's good, like he's not a good character. It's just like that's that's the clutch. <laughs> Bring in this character because we have him. And even even then, I would not pick him over like I, I wouldn't pick him over like Tima. I wouldn't pick him over Charnog. I wouldn't pick him over Vodin. Like there's there's so many other characters that you would want to pick over Ezra. And I just I don't think that he's good at all. Uh, and then Grizama, since I've already moved to here, we're gonna bring uh, bring her up. Uh, Grizama again has not changed in the slightest. She's a very strange character that is very hit or miss. Like you can do well, but if you fall behind or the enemy like understands what they need to do to face against Grizama, then you're not you're not doing anything. Like your hands are dying too quickly. Um, or like you're arriving at fights too late and you can't set up, so then you're basically just standing there. <laughs> like you, you, you might put down a hand and get like that clutch cleanse, where you know if if your if your assassin is running around the corner and has four different debuffs on him, then you know that cleanse super helpful. You know, but you're probably not winning the team fight, right? With Grizama, Grizama will. Grizema will slaughter like solo queue because people don't understand how to play against her. Like people, people don't prioritize hands. People don't move to different areas of the map so that you're not fighting in hands. Because if you fight in hands, like if you're fighting in hands, Grizema's team is gonna win 100. Like that, no one will, no one will ever argue that. But she's just so easy to answer, um, and it's like her biggest downfall. She's not. She's not flexible enough to be put on any team in any situation, and she's going to remain down here for me. Um, just always. Uh, HK. Moving on to HK. I put HK in B tier, actually, on my last list, um, and he got a nice little quality of life change, and I actually... <laughs> I, I actually kind of regret putting him as low as B. I do think he has like until this most recent until this most recent little uh buff that he got i do think that he did fall off a little bit um there were like there's some very specific hk players that are really good at hk and like they're the only ones um but yeah hk now i think that the he 
the the most recent batch that he got the the buff that he got was um there is less spread on his bullets when he when he's firing both unfortified and fortified so he's far more accurate um and that really really helped him so i think i'm gonna put him here i don't think that he i think beckett is still a little bit better than him but like these two are gonna be very very close in the in the final standings i i think is is gonna be my immediate like impression uh ha is ha is a lot better now i still think that <laughs> i still think it was unjustified to give him like to remove his ability to dodge while fortified like i get why he can't thematically but it just doesn't feel good when you can't dodge while fortified and it makes this weird it, it it's made this weird playstyle where it's actually better like in a lot of public opinion it's actually better just to never fortify as ha like ever just and that's so that's so weird to me like i i hate the fact that his i, I hate the fact that his unique playstyle is something that you can't even use because it's kind of a detriment now like it's just it's too it's too hard on you like it's too much of a threat on yourself to not it's too much of a threat on yourself to stay in one place so you're never going to fortify and it's just i just uh it it irks me so much because like that's hk's super fun gimmick and like he gets extra benefits from being fortified but they're not good enough in the current situation to, like n you never want to fortify an hk and i just i hate that um anyway Imani. Imani was S tier in my last video. She was the top of S tier. She's going to remain at the top of S tier. Uh, Imani is the best range damage threat in this game. She will remain that way, even with the like, even with the changes to her. Um, we're not even really considering. We're not even really going to consider the bug that she had on on snapshot because it got fixed super quickly. But you know, <laughs> even even without that, she was going to stay up here. Um, like she got she got a little bit of nerf with the concentration upgrade on her focus so she's got a slight less focus generation like the focus generation on the q blast radius explosion upgrade like that generates less focus and it also doesn't burn other people that are in the explosion it only burns the person you're actually hitting with the bullet like those are all very solid nerfs but it doesn't change anything about Amani's playstyle and Amani's presence in the game. You you see an Amani on the enemy team, and you're just like, okay, someone has to go in and fight her, or we'll lose. You like you you're gonna lose every single encounter if, if Amani is not touched, like a hundred percent of the time. It's just it's there's there's no arguing against it. You you have to pressure her, and that's the reason why she's an S tier. Because that's that that is textbook definition of having to adapt your entire um your entire team's like approach to the game <laughs> because you see her imani is by far the most banned character in competitive and she's probably gonna stay that way like just Amani's the best character uh moving on i'm gonna talk about kajir kajir i also put on s tier uh kajir is also going to stay in s tier he did get nerfed he got nerfed he got fixed a lot of bugs were adjusted um you know like his dodge attacks don't hit twice anymore like some some abilities got longer cooldowns uh toxin shock does way less damage but like this doesn't change anything about Kajir's presence because he still has insane burst potential. Like his his right mouse button still cleaves, and that makes no sense to me. It doesn't make sense to anybody. Like that should not hit more than one person. Um, like he's still incredibly, like he's still a, a great escape artist. His Q range is huge and does a ton of damage. Like. There, there are so many things about Kajir that are still way over tuned and you see an enemy Kajir on the team and you, you really have to be in that mindset of like Kajir could pop in at any moment and we have to be ready for that. And even if you are ready for that, chances are he's going to annihilate the person he's going on or he's going to force that person to run away. And that is it's 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 not. It's not good for the sake of balance, but he's still going to be up here. And I, I don't imagine 
at any point that he's going to fall off unless they really hit him with the hammer hard. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see kind of as, as things progress. Moving on, let's go to Gnosis. Gnosis, I put in C tier. I actually put him at the bottom of C tier. I unfortunately think he's going to stay there. Um, Gnosis had some nice moments in some recent tournaments that I can think of, especially on more smaller Brawly maps like Ghost Reef, um, where, you know, a majority melee team be being enhanced by the presence of Gnosis. I, I think he has great presence. Like, this is why I'm putting him in C tier, because I think he can pop off. I think there is a place for him somewhere in the world of competitive Gigantic. Um, but he still has, like, so many problems like the fact that he's in the frontliner role without really being tanky enough to like really fulfill that strategy or or that or that fantasy of playing that type of character um his damage is phenomenal um but he's also a very 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 large target he's got a massive hurt box that is just like you don't even really have to fully aim at him and you're going to hit Gnosis with something every single time. Uh, he's also lightly armored. He's got no upgrades that give him extra defenses. He's got, again, he's got that like one upgrade that gives him extra health. And that seems to be like the flavor of the month right now. Um, and, you know, not to say that, again, not to say that Gnosis can't do well, but I don't really see him. F <laughs> I don't really see him being picked over a lot of other characters like if, if you want melee there's margrave there's ramsey there's Wu and rutger and paco like all these other characters just completely fill the exact same niche that you want to use gnosis for better in in every single way uh so just he's gonna sit down here until he's got some sort of love um or you know <laughs> or until people get overrun by the full melee team cop and, and there's no answer to it. Moving on, let's go to Margrave. Margrave, I put near the bottom of A tier. Um, no, Margrave is definitely very, very good. Um, yeah, I'm going to put him at the top. I'm putting him at the top of A right now. I, I never, <laughs> I never doubted Margrave like at all. I just felt like a lot of people weren't playing him. And now that a quite literally a month and a half has passed and a lot of people have been learning Margrave and there, there are really, really strong Margrave players. You know, we're, we we've seen him picked or banned in almost every single team composition, whether dittos were allowed or not. Um, he's just good at everything that you want from this type of character. Like he's got great engage. He's got great aoe control um he's got a ton of like flexible different little upgrade pass you know it's just there there are so many things about margrave that really really are good i feel like margrave's margrave's one of those few characters in my honest i i don't remember where i said this i feel like i've said this before but margrave is one of those one, margrave is one of those characters that's so good that like even without upgrades i still think that he would pop off in like every game that he's played like you you could not pick a single upgrade in in your scores like in your in your abilities and you would you would still perform well because that's just how strong margrave is um does he need a team to help him yes um but are you ever going to be mad that Amari is on your team? No. The reason he's not an S is because, in my honest opinion, like, he just, he does exactly what you want, but he's not, he's not, <laughs> no one's on, no one's looking at Margrave across the field and being like, ooh, we really got to watch out for that. Like, I mean, you, you are looking out for that because it's just Margrave, but there's no, there's no adaptation you know, Mar Margrave would deserve to be an S tier on a lot of other people's lists, but Margrave right now is just so insanely impactful in every situation. There's, he's so good on every team, and every team will continue to use him, and unless he gets banned, obviously. Uh, Mozu, Mozu is at the bottom of A. I, hmm. I want, I want Mozu to be good. 
<laughs> I feel like she is really good, but I feel like there are a lot of people that either one don't understand her or two are more easily finding answers to her because she's kind of got the she's kind of got the Amani syndrome. <laughs> that, that's that's a phrase that I'm coining right this moment. She's got the Amani syndrome where if you don't touch her, if you if you don't like if you don't engage her in any sort of way, she's going to carry the fight in almost every sense because she just has tremendously stupidly high power of uh, damage output. The problem is, is that Mozu is a lot shorter range than Amani is. And she's, um, she, she kind of has this problem where she needs a couple of upgrades before she really starts to like, I, I shouldn't say that's really a problem, but she she definitely requires some upgrades before you really are looking at Mozu and saying like, oh, okay, great. Like uh, compared to Amani, who's good at level two and onward, and and she, she just she's just gonna do a ton of damage. Mozu needs a little bit of build up, and by the time that she's built up, in my opinion, people are are like finding a, an answer to her, and they're they're forcing her to get away from the fight because it's way easier to do. She's got a better escape. Um, She's got a way better escape, and she's got some very nice utility uh, for the team. But generally, I think that uh, she's much easier to answer than Imani is. So I'm, I'm putting her down here. Um, she's also She also just lacks multi-target damage outside of her focus. And I think, I think like, area of effect damage is really, really important in this current meta. Because a lot of people are, like, sticking together and fighting on points. Uh, so... You, you you really need to you really need to have a little bit of extra to kind of get that higher up uh, status. Oru Oru I also Oru I put in B. Put, Oru I actually put on the bottom of B, and I think he's gonna stay there. Um, he did get a nice little you know buff. I I had this I had this rant somewhere. I feel like I recorded something that I never actually like put on my channel or something i i feel like i'm repeating myself but oru Oru had this nice oh no i, was, I talked about it in the past notes that's right oru had this nice little buff where uh his lmb and rmb travel a little further and for the lmb it just doesn't make any sense for me because that range it wasn't homing and that didn't give it increased homing it just it made it go a little further this very narrow slow moving projectile can now travel a little further and it just it i don't know it's not i i feel like it didn't do anything the rmb the rmb in hindsight like when when i recorded that um when i recorded the patch notes like the rmb i kind of skimmed over the rmb actually is nice that it got a little upgrade because now you can affect more people that are further away but the lmb just that one doesn't make sense to me uh, but anyway oru Otherwise has not been changed. I still think everything that I said about him in my last tier list um, not really has changed. He he can do super well. He's got this nice like little bit of area of effect. He's got some great control. Um, I think I still think that he performs better as like a little bit of an aggressive support character in many ways like Zenobia. Um, but uh, there, there are a lot of people that are still kind of not really giving... Oru the time of day uh, because just his his damage is so limited to single target unless you get a bunch of people with cards at the same time like if you if you hit LMB on like three people at the same time and then RMB and then you manage to hit all of them and then use your E like yeah that's a big pop of AoE damage and and control but that that AoE damage is also like a 20 second cooldown I think or something like that like he's got long cooldowns for his actual burst potential and he still has not really the best focus like uh his his focus is meh like you can you can still dodge it it's harder to dodge it doesn't really do a ton of damage unless you're super super low because it, it's an execute mechanic uh otherwise it just doesn't do anything um and granted he does generate focus really fast so he can use it very often but still to this day like more people are using Oru's focus to get him out of a dangerous situation because it puts him in the air and even then he's still very large and fairly easy to hit and prevent from finishing the focus so he like 
that I, I, he hasn't really moved for me. It just, he's still going to be here. <laughs> that that's, that's about it. Uh, Paco, Paco, I put in B tier. I think Paco has risen some. I think I'm going to put Paco here. Paco, Paco hasn't changed at all. Like, I don't think he's gotten any adjustments to my, like, to my immediate, uh, knowledge. Um, but the reason why I'm moving him up is because there are a lot more people that are now playing him. And he's actually, like, one of the most flexible characters in this game. Um, he, he works very, very well as a frontline, like, kind of supportive secondary tank, maybe primary tank in some situations. Um like frontliner engage um he's amazing follow-up engage with the snowball uh snowball's the most important ability is super super clutch and if you can get really good at landing snowballs like you are you are invaluable in every situation um like he's got great area of effect control um he's a big damage threat if you spec him more damagey he even fits like a support style role because of the AOE slows and, and just crowd control. Like Paco is super good. Um, and, and a lot more people are starting to understand how he works. I think Paco's only detriment and the reason why I'm not ranking him higher is because he falls off late game very hard because a lot of people, by, by the time he reaches level eight or nine, um, he's not or i shouldn't say he's not but a lot of people are, are more often like dodging snowballs or staying out of those area of effects like not grouping as close together um they're also like <laughs> pago doesn't like pago's got very few defensive upgrades and he's also very large and he's got he's got a lot of health he's got the second most health in the game at, at a base but like he uh he, he's very easy to hit and he's very very squishy unless he takes that one lmb upgrade that gives more armor and even then like you can shred through this guy's health very quickly um so by the time late game comes around like it's just i, f I feel like it's really hard to find actual good moments with paco unless you get like this really good flank with frozen path or this very very good snowball engage on like one priority person and and he's still gonna have value that way obviously uh but i i can't really put him up here with margrave because i still think that margrave will margrave's good throughout the entire game paco will fall off at one point and you know eventually <laughs> i feel like if you don't win your game like if everyone reaches level 10 and you've got a paco on your team it's weirdly suddenly a lot harder to actually win because Paco becomes less valuable like with his long cooldowns and just his low like defensives he's also the only frontliner that doesn't have like lifeline or skirmishing or one of those upgrades that give health back faster or get you out of combat faster um so if you punish him a lot he's out of fights sooner and with that big health pool it doesn't help him get back in fights so that that's also kind of a detriment to him. So yeah, he, he's he's weird. Uh, Ramsey, <coughs> Ramsey, I also put in B tier. Excuse me. Um, Ramsey has also moved up for me. I feel like, um, I feel like I want to put Ramsey. Oh man, do I want to put Ramsey below? Do I want to put Ramsey still in this tier? I think Ramsey does very very well i just think the problem is that ramsey ramsey fits into like a like two very specific play styles when it comes to team compositions and that's like that's the hyper disruptive back capping play style and the full melee uh composition play style like or not full melee but like melee focused hard like hard dive you know frontlining focused play styles and those those play styles are both very very good um but that's kind of why he's only here i think that i think that the fact that even though he is super good and he's got great damage he's got like in the hands of a, a in the hands of a good ramsey he's 
basically unstoppable and he's he's super good at like you know punishing people that are alone he's got great damage output he does good like area of effect damage surprisingly um he's got good control like with interrupts on rmb and days on his q if you go at that path he's got great survivability upgrades like he's all around very very good um but the downfall again are those he only really suits those two play styles and he also just doesn't have a good focus like if if ramsey had a better focus i think he would actually be borderline like s tier because he's just like insanely oppressive all of the time and uh yeah but otherwise like eh, i'm i'm i i think ramsey is very very good but i, I think i'm just going to keep him in b tier but he's definitely the top of b tier for sure moving on let's go to roland Roland, I put in A tier. Roland, I actually put in high A tier. I think he's still very good. I'm just, the reason I said it that way is I'm still not sure where I want to put him. I think I'm going to put him here. I, I, well, maybe not. Maybe, maybe above Paco. Because Paco, Paco falls off and he's, uh, Paco still has that factor of, of being, you know, super flexible. But, <laughs> Roland is crazy good at doing so much damage from far ranges um with like with the bullet upgrade or the or the single slug upgrade um the like the scatter shotgun upgrade the the scatter up blah, the the shotgun upgrade tree is also still good even though a lot less people are using it um he still has an insane focus like, even with being nerfed, his focus is still super good. Um, the bolas are still super good. Like, there there are so many things that are still in uh, Roland's favor. I do I do think that a lot of people are finding ways to answer him now. I, I think he's getting... I, I, think, I think a lot of teams are realizing how to actually play against Roland, which is great. Uh, but he's still going to be super good like he still pairs so well with like area of effect focused teams um you know th like there there are gross combinations of like margrave <laughs> like margrave stunning with either e or with his focus and then roland follows up with focus same thing with uh same thing with paco's focus like those two combos are super super good but even without those like even without that pairing he still performs well. Um, he's got insane damage. Like it just, I don't know. There's, th there are still things that I think could be tuned with with Roland, but I think even if he gets more nerfs, he's still gonna be super good. Let's move on to Rutger. Has Rutger fallen off? Uh, the answer is no, but he has he has fallen off more because of the fixes. Roland, not Roland, Rutger had some insane bugs going on with him in regards to his personal shields, and those have been fixed. And since then, I have seen him less and less, but he's still doing very well in the games that he's in. So I want to put him, I want to put him like here, not there, there. I want to put him like here. Like, walls are still going to be super valuable. He's got great control. He's got great AoE. Big damage. He lives forever. You know, like, he's he's invulnerable while digging. He escapes... <coughs> he escapes so many situations where he really should die in. He's got insane, like, engage potential. Like, he's, he's a good frontliner. He's a good tanky character. He's also got very good, like, damage potential upgrades if you decide to go more of a bruiser or even like full damage dealing path he's still really really good like i've i've got i've got nothing really more to say about rucker even like even after the nerves and or ner not nerfs quote unquote nerfs uh bug fixes is more accurate even with those bug fixes that have toned him down a lot uh he's still super strong Next up is Sven. Sven's in S tier. Sven was in S tier in my past video. He will remain in S tier because he is the best character in the game. 
<laughs> Sven is the best support. Sven has great damage. Sven has great utility. Like, insane healing numbers. He has not been touched. I am so surprised that he has still not been nerfed, despite everyone and their mother knowing how insanely good Sven is. Uh... I mean, what else can you really say? Like, you you have to you, you have to be aware that Sven is on the enemy team because he makes people live forever. He has an insanely good focus, generates so fast. Like, Sven is Sven, <laughs> Sven's so good. It's just what else? What else can I say? Everyone knows Sven is super good. Uh, let's move on. T Matt. T Matt is. Tina was A tier. I put her just below Ashlyn, surprisingly. I actually thought I would keep her at the top. I probably should have. Um, no, she's at the top. She's not in S tier. I'm going to move. And come on. Come on, work with me. There we go. No. All right, there we go. Okay, that's what I wanted. Uh, listen, it's because it's, it's genuinely just because team is still super super oppressive she's so strong in every like aspect of of her existence you know she got she got nerfed <laughs> she got this nice little nerf of of her rmb doesn't apply burning to those that got hit by the little aoe explosion but that doesn't matter it's still her most picked talent it's still it still does <coughs> god my my throat right now because i'm yelling so much um it just it still does so much damage and and like the burning was never even really the problem in my honest opinion like the burning was annoying it did a, a good amount of damage and obviously it's annoying to be burned because that means you're in combat longer and you're you're slowly losing more health and not able to generate or regenerate but like her focus never got toned down her her escape didn't get toned down uh i mean her focus did get tuned, tuned down a little bit earlier like when the game got released but even even with that like it's still super strong um she does so much damage she's she again has a great escape like she's she's probably the most valuable range damage character behind damani and the reason the reason she's still not an s tier is because she's not doing anything like insanely new or super pivotal to the team or the play style that the enemy team is trying to do. Like, you, of course, still have to answer her because she's team at. Like, it's, it's the same exact thing with Beckett. Like, you have to have an answer to them because they exist and just that's just the characters that they are. But she, they're not doing things that Amani is doing. You're not required to, <laughs> you're not required to have someone dedicate their entire time to going after team at as, as compared to Amani. So I, I still think that she's not an S tier, but she's definitely very high. Uh, let's go on. We're going up with Trip. Uh, Trip. I mean, I still want to put Trip in S tier, but she's going to be. If if S tier was if S tier was not the if S tier didn't have the bracket definition that I had given it, she'd actually probably be like in B tier. I'm just going to say that now. The reason why I'm still putting her in S tier is because you have to be aware that Trip exists. R regardless of how well she's doing, if you have or rather if you have an answer for her or anything like that, you have to be aware that Trip is in the game because she goes invisible. <laughs> like that that is that is the clutch thing that she has that so many other characters don't have. <laughs> she can go invisible and stay invisible for a very, very long time. And she has she has upgrades and like an entire playstyle that revolves and is enhanced by the fact that she stays invisible for long periods of time and does more damage exiting from stealth and can re-enter stealth like much easier. Like she's she doesn't she's fallen off in terms of like priority and like actual threats as far as like as far as like damage threats like woo 
Taito, like even Taito, and, and of course Kajir, like they have more damage than she does. If we put the four assassins in a bracket, I do actually agree with a lot of people are saying that Trip is probably the probably the worst assassin in the game right now. But that doesn't change the fact that she still is Trip. <laughs> if she catches you by herself, like if, if she catches you alone, you die, especially if you're low. Um, she can back caps she, like she can back cap creatures still super, super easily. She will beat down every single creature super fast and get away every single time because she's got the stealth unless like she totally messes up but people that are people that are playing on a competitive level people are playing at the highest level of game and uh are really really good at trip they're not messing up and those those people know exactly how to play her and in most situations will never die like unless it's just one of those things where there was literally no escape or it was just super unlucky like chip is really really good and a lot of people need to give her the respect that she deserves still being an s tier despite being the worst assassin in the game it's such a weird thing to say but like it's it's so true if you really think about it for a little bit anyway let's go to Tido now Taito I put in C tier. Taito has moved up for me. I have seen a lot of Taito do very well. I do think that he is going to stay in the bottom of B tier though. I just I think compared to I think compared to Wu and uh I think compared to Wu and of course Kajir and even characters like Ramsey Ooh, excuse me uh even other characters like ramsey or even like even like a fully damaged fo dam like bleh, a fully damaged dedicated paco i still feel like can do better than taito can now granted ramsey and ramsey and paco are not assassins they don't do that sort of thing so taito does not have taito does have that up on them uh but I think it's a lot easier to deal with Taito as of recently. Um, he doesn't have like he doesn't have the burst that the other characters do. I mean, Wu has Wu has some burst, but it's all mostly combo games and it's more relying around CC. But it's like the damage still comes out eventually. But like Trip has burst, Kajir has a ton of burst, and Wu has what I just what I just mentioned of the combo potential burst taito does not really have that taito has to find people that are low to get like a swoop kill and that's only if you got that upgrade because there are people that are playing with like the cleanse swoop and and people are are people are using taito super well i just think that he falls short compared to the other assassins but i i, I do think that he deserves a little more credit than i've given him ad admittedly but yeah he's he's gonna say the bottom of b uh, Vadasi. Vadasi is up here. <laughs> this, this, uh, this S tier is exactly the same. I actually, I think I'm going to put her above Trip because I still think Trip is a little less impactful than she used to be. But, like, nothing has changed about her. Vadasi's still super good and she's, she's insane. And there are, <laughs> there are, the reason that you never really see her is because people, understand how stupid she is and don't want to play her like the the support those support mains that i can think of that want to play but like that know how to play vadasi don't actually want to play vadasi because they find it stupid boring and broken and they like they respect the game enough to not play vadasi and that's that is such an insane thing to say out loud because the same could not be said for gajir enjoyers um no shade of course but but yeah, Vadasi just he has everything that you want from a healer, and she has these she she has like these insane moments where she, her whole team is just unkillable, and she's unkillable, and she's got low cooldowns and insane health management and, and uh, health health self sustain and team sustain, and it's just like she's she's so hard to pin down especially if you're really really good at her unless it's like a total combined effort but from the team but that's also the reason why she's an s tier because it requires the team to focus her to get her down 
And by the time that you actually get her down, you've probably already lost the fight because you're doing, you're putting all these resources on fighting a healer instead of fighting like the damage threats that are like whittling you down the entire time. And then like, you know, even with, even with poison, even if you focus on getting poison on the team, but Vadasi is still pulling insane healing numbers. Like, <laughs> Vadasi deserves some attention. And it's... I, I... Oh, man. I, I could go on a rant for a long time about Vadasi, and I, I don't want to. Um, Vodin. Vodin has stayed... Vodin has moved up. Uh, for me, Vodin deserves way more respect than the community is giving him right now. Um, I I almost dare say that Vodin is like here. <laughs> I I do genuinely think that Vodin, maybe not better than Beckett, but Vodin is so good right now. Vodin got buffed, and a lot of people are really starting to come out of the woodwork with Vodin, and just like. <laughs> he's he's insane like the damage is not the damage is not as high like you're not you're not gonna see huge damage numbers compared to a lot of other range damage characters but when Vodin can land his shots like no one survives the poison is so strong like the the poison throw upgrade tree side of the tree is so strong um the the clone got buffed He's, he still has like he still has the most impactful focus in the game that no one ever talks about. <laughs> like natural roots is so good. Natural roots is such a strong focus, and like more people need to talk about that and, and bring it up. Vodin is insanely good, and people that people that are like range damage focused like players that want to improve like that want to expand their repertoire like of course have team and beckett under your belt but like really really consider Vodin. he is so good and, and on top of all the utility that he has you know with the with the jump pad and he's super fast with you know with that easy strider focus upgrade Vodin is really strong and you you should start playing him more a hundred percent uh woo Wu is back again, and I mean, what else can I say? Wu is Wu is here. I put Wu in A tier. I put Wu in A tier in every list with him that I've done so far. Um, all the serious ones, at least. Um, I'm moving him to S because they reverted, not not fully reverted. Um, they they changed his E upgrade again. Or his his E clash talent again, and it's still not his best clash talent, and that's not really the that's not really the important thing here. But Wu has be Wu has become this super oppressive nuisance that just can no longer be ignored at any point. I I mean I I always I always knew that 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 was I always knew that that was the case this whole time, but I never really. I never really considered Wu to be that kind of character where you had to you had to think of the fact that he was on the enemy team and you needed to watch out for it. Because of the fact that the E talent did get changed so that it that long tongue no longer existed. That was the that was the factor in my opinion that kept him in S tier. And when that got changed, I said, "Oh, he's not in S tier anymore." But he's moved back up because of the playstyle that he now that that everyone is now doing with Wu, that it's just this insane like control style character with resets and displacements and tons of damage. He's impossible to pin down. He disrupts everything. Like he's not doing insane amounts of damage anymore. Uh, but but even even when like some of the like the damage still adds up because the person that you're prioritizing is going to be getting hit by everybody because that person literally can't move for like a solid five seconds and it's just it's gross i i i can't stand a good woo <laughs> and a good woo knows how valuable they are and, and much like trip a good woo will never die but us uh, like as opposed to trip woo is good in 
so many situations and he's also flexible in his role of being an assassin or a brawler and just like he's he's really good Zenobia put Zenobia in C tier that's where she was in my last list I do think that Zenobia I mean I do th I do think that Zenobia has a world in competitive gigantic I do think that she has the ability to play well if she just got a little bit more love um, but she's also super, super hard to tune because she's also like super oppressive in solo queue. And, you know, th there are a bunch of people that know, you know, over, over the course of time, people will eventually learn that once more than <laughs> once more than one person is attacking Zenobia, she basically just melts. Um, but that doesn't mean that she's not valuable because she's got so much control and she's got this like very wide area of effect like oppression zone she still has an amazing focus that is so hard to use properly and it can be like the biggest downfall about her and that's why a lot of people don't want to use her because the focus is just it's it's so hard to use properly because it can like the the one moment that you use the focus incorrectly can totally change the team fight and like turn the entire fight against your team and like everyone will blame you because like why did you kill them why did you kill them like blah, 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 blah. Or, or why did you why did you focus them <coughs> so it's it's hard really to it's hard really to have a good place for Zenobia because of the fact that she's got short ranges like not a ton of damage she's just kind of got um, she's just kind of got like debuffs, but debuffs you can use like Oru for, debuffs you can use Paco for, debuffs you can even use freaking like Sven and Imani for. Like there, there are, there are other characters in this game that do what Zenobia wants to do. Um, they don't do them quite as well, but they have other things that make them better overall and more viable in team compositions. So that's kind of why Zenobia just unfortunately falls short. Uh, but I I do think in a world where I, I do think in a world where she got a little bit of buffs, a little bit of love here and there, she could actually be super super good. Um, and yeah, I, I I do like Zenobia a lot. Is she just she falls short? She's she doesn't really have a place compared to like a bunch of other team compositions you can build. And then finally, Zandora. Zandora also, I mean, truthfully. My opinion has not changed about Zendora. I think the the first tier list I made, I put Z uh, Zendora in D, and ever since then I've put her in C. I do think that she has gotten better. I do think that the buffs were nice. I do think that the buffs gave her, you know, this um this gave her this identity of not being a troll pick anymore, and like really benefiting this team composition of of a bunch of like frontliners or, or melee characters that kind of all want to move together you know a group of three or more melee characters and she's like perfectly suited to be the crux of that team because she thrives in that sort of environment where everyone's just doing more damage or everyone's getting healed or everyone's moving faster she's got a great focus um and that that you know that's that's a huge thing about her that's an it's an amazing focus like valor shielding is a very very strong focus probably one of the best in the game in terms of like pure team fight potential and survivability but the reason she stays in c <coughs> is because she just she's not she's not good enough in the roles that the game wants her to be to perform those roles she's not as good of a frontliner tanky style character as rutger or like um Rucker or Margravar, and she's not good of enough a support, like a, a healer or a buffer, uh, or or a cleanser, as good as Sven and Ashlyn are, um, and that's that's why it's so much harder to slot her into a team, because she just she doesn't perform super well. Like again, it's it, that's kind of the reason why C tier is the way that it is. Like you need a specific team composition for any of these characters to perform super well. And it's like a, it's a, it is a very specific play style in a very specific situation where, you know, you have that moment and everyone's like, Ooh, Zendora is insane. Oh my God. You know, like 
you know, Zendora and Gnosis and, and, and Margrave, like, holy crap, they're unstoppable. You know, and that that is that case that is the case in that situation, but that's not you know, that's not enough for me to justify putting her any higher than C because that's just how it is. Alright, with that in the way, we will reveal our goat. Who is the goat right now? I feel like it's got it's obviously gotta be one of my S tiers. Who is the goat right now? My goat in my last tier list was actually uh Rutger. I think my goat is gonna be Sven. Sven is just I mean there <laughs> there's I would say nothing else than what I've already said about Sven. He is he is so good in every single situation. You're never upset about seeing Sven on your team. You will always find value playing as or playing with Sven. Just healing, buffing, cleansing, you know, polymorphing, huge damage output potential, like keeping enemies in combat, the armor shred, um, just the, 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 the jump pad. Like, what what else is there to say? It's just Sven, Sven is so good. <laughs> there's 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 nothing wrong with this character aside from just how insanely powerful he is and he needs to be nerfed like he needs to be nerfed please abstraction S do something about sven because <laughs> because everyone loves him but they want him to be less impactful <laughs> it's so it's so weird to have a character be so loved but also just like generally hated in terms of balance but anyway uh, do I want to make any adjustments here? Final placements. No, I think HA has improved a lot more. Uh, yeah, Ramsey. Yeah, I think I think I'm actually very solid with with what I did here. I feel like other tier lists I slightly move some people, but no, for the most part here, I actually think I'm super happy with this. But yeah, that's that's my tier list. Uh, if you you know if you agree or disagree, please leave comments. I love starting up discussions and and wondering what you guys think. You know, and I I do have to I do have to reiterate that this tier list is entirely based on the highest tier of play, um, not solo queue, like not <laughs> like not just entering clash mode or or rush mode. Like those are entirely different play styles, entirely different tier lists, uh, and I can do those tier lists if you if you so wish for me to. Um, but yeah, this is again my opinion. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Have a great day. I will see you in the next one.